Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm showing you how I did our April 15th paycheck budget review. So if you're new to my channel, we are paid monthly on the 15th of every month. And I like to perform these budget reviews each month, usually around the paychecks. That way I know exactly how we did in terms of sticking to our budget and our variable categories for the previous month. And I can better budget those categories for our upcoming paycheck month. So I'm starting by showing you our cashless trackers for the previous month. So next I'll go to the April budget review page in my budgeting workbook. I created this workbook to fill in gaps that I felt were missing from a majority of the other workbooks out there. And believe me, I've tried a lot of them. I talk about why in other videos and I can link them down below, but basically we were missing forward planning and we were missing a review process. And I also felt that a lot of the budgeting workbooks out there were trying to get you to fit your income into calendar months. And that's just not how most incomes work. So in this review section, I do like to color code this section. The colors along the left are the same colors on our expense tracker. This month, our variable expenses were in food, which is pink, household, which is purple, orange is fuel, yellow is miscellaneous, and light blue is our pet category. And on this table, I write in what we budgeted in each category for that month, and I, I check back to the paycheck budget sheet for that. Sometimes we stick to a certain amount month to month to month, but other times it kind of varies based off the previous month. And then next to that, I change pen colors here and I write what we actually spent in each category. Green means we were under what we budgeted. Red means we were over what we budgeted. So for our April 15th paycheck, we budgeted $800 for food because the month prior we spent just over $900 on food. And I am proud to say that this month we spent $587.03. Household, we budgeted $200 and we spent $137.53. Fuel, I budgeted $150. Under normal circumstances, we budget $300 a month because we are constantly running around between dance, band, chorus, jazz band, academic decathlon. I've got a high schooler, a middle schooler, an elementary kid, and they are just, they're hitting that stride. And we don't live in town. We live 30 minutes outside of town. So $300 a month is what we'll normally go through. But this month we only spent $45.83. Fuel prices in our area are super low and we just haven't been going places. Now I will note here, this is just for my vehicle. Hubs has a company truck and the company pays for fuel in his truck. All he has to do is log his miles based on whether they were personal miles or company miles. In November, they basically deduct his personal miles from his paycheck. And so we save up for it each year, estimating based off the previous year. And so miscellaneous expenses, we budgeted $150 and we spent $126.12. And I'm finding that a lot of money now is going to printer ink and paper and no longer fuel. This is just because, you know, my kids are doing online enrichments from home now for school and some of it they do need to print out, especially my daughter, my second grader. Finally, our pet category. This category, I budgeted $265 this month. It was our chewy eight week auto ship with food for our cat, our dog, and our two bunnies, as well as some toys and training treats for our pup. We ended up spending $457.90. In some of the questions on these review sheets that I will go through at the end of the video, I do reflect back on what happened this month that contributed to us spending so much more money in our pet category. So after I fill out the officially spent numbers on the budget review page, I go back to our paycheck budget sheet and I fill those same numbers into each of the categories. And while I'm on this sheet, I just kind of go through the rest of this. So I double check our therapy copay numbers. I see that I've only paid $75 this month and I've estimated 90. So I'm going to go back and double check that the number of sessions we've had does indeed translate to $90 in copays. And it does. So I should be expecting a bill for that remaining 15 that wasn't paid in the office. 
This really just depends on what office location we went to at the time of the appointment or if the appointment was a Zoom appointment. So I write down that 90 was paid because that is what needs to be paid. And I know in this pink color that I'm still expecting a bill for the remaining $15 copay that I owe. Next, I'm showing a breakdown of this past month. I mentioned in one of my videos that with everybody home, I need the smack me in my face reminders of what was coming from sinking funds. And that's what's shown here in the income section in blue and orange. In this area, I also have our overage from my March budget review. I'll leave a link to that video below because I go through and talk about the process that I use a little bit better. And I'll also leave a link to the blog post below that I, I talk about this as well. So adding up our total income this month, we have $8,004.74. Please keep in mind that our income for this month is a variety of different sources. Hub's income is the majority of it at $5,850 and some change. But there's also $20 that a friend owed me and $1,151 from savings that includes our deck project that we started when Hub's was off and it's sinking funds for bills and expenses that we had throughout the month. And the remainder of this chunk is from our March overage that was rolled from that paycheck into this paycheck for a large snowball payment. Sinking funds, we, we saved $1,064.50. That's pretty standard. That will change shortly though as our sinking funds are changing throughout the summer. Bills I estimated at $2,703, but we ended up spending $3,735.79. And this increase is strictly from the rollover from our March check that went straight to debt. Cash envelopes, I budgeted $1,515 and we wound up spending $1,381.30. This is even with overspending in our pet category by a lot. We were still under budget on our cash envelopes. There was an extra expense that I just kind of threw in this area, $32.84 for a modem. We were having major internet issues mid-April. Let's be honest, with as rural as we live, we have internet issues anyways. It's just a step up from dial-up. But Verizon kept saying that it was a mix of our modem and their circuits, and it was like a 48 hour ordeal. Every time that we would call to find out what was going on, because Hubs was still working from home at that time, we would get a different rep with a different answer. And so to kind of get them off our end and it being, you know, it's not the modem because it's a brand new modem, we just purchased a brand new modem. For expenses under our debit category, I budgeted $1,045 and we ended up spending $1,068. A little bit over, but a lot of it was rearranged. So some changes here are that we didn't spend a lot under what we budgeted for fuel, as I mentioned before. Our therapy broke even at $90. Dance didn't happen again this month, so I didn't make the payment. And the big one, the Disney trip was canceled. O's clarinet rental was usually, I budget $45, but with the March overage that we had, I just paid it off. That was $531 and change. And I did wind up renewing my license for $30.50, but I didn't get the real ID since all the DMV locations are closed in my area. And then our county taxes here in bright orange were $360.64. This I save up for in our non-monthly sinking fund. So in the bottom corner here, I run through the numbers. The left side of this table is what we spent, that total number from each of those categories above. And the right side of the table is the running tally or the amount remaining from our income after each category. And with our April paycheck, we're left with $755.14. And since I'm recording this voiceover a little bit later, I can tell you that that $755, we've already used a portion of it to just pay off the Best Buy card. And the remainder went to some of my Explorer's suspension charge from last fall that's sitting on my chase. So back to these budget review pages. I talk about how the pet category was something that I could have better budgeted for. Our overage in this category came down to a few things. One, I forgot to keep writing cat litter down. Hubs has been doing all the shopping and I'm just used to you know, going through the motions. There are certain things that I get week to week to week that I don't need to write down. I just know it. And one of those things is cat litter. I know that if the 
refillable Petco cat litter containers are in the back of my Explorer, I fill them up while I'm out. Usually when I go out, I go to Target first, and when I'm putting everything from Target in the car, and I see those Petco cat litter containers, I know, all right, Petco, you know, right down the little plaza here and fill those up. Since I haven't been the one shopping, I've forgotten to write it down. And so that was one of the expenses that we didn't budget for. The second one is our pup is a power chewer and we're trying, we're kind of in that trying toys phase where some of the toys that she had as a young pup are now all torn to shreds and the new ones that we're buying her, we are kind of testing their strengths. We do get the tougher. We don't tend to go for ones that are like just torn apart in minutes. However, we're learning that she does need like the strongest toys available and the strongest bones that there are out there. Third, our pup cannot have rawhide. I tried to avoid it for the longest time possible with her. Pups kept saying, you know, she's chewing through these alternatives really fast just get her a rawhide, it'll last. And it did, and she loves it, but it doesn't agree with her tummy as most rawhides do. Neither do some of the alternatives out there. We've had different alternatives that we've tested that are supposed to be like rawhide and give her that stimulation that she needs, but she ends up getting days of diarrhea. And I wish that were an exaggeration, but it's not. And then finally, I wound up getting a second cage to separate my son's rabbits. They're 18 month old brothers and they've become very territorial with each other. So I just got a second set up. That way we're, they can be separate. We're not having to worry about splitting up rabbit fights anymore. And finally on these pages, I mentioned that for May, to help better reach our financial goals, we can pay off the Best Buy card and send the remainder of the overage to the suspension charge on my chase. And I write that down on a post-it and stick it on our May budget paycheck sheet to help remind me where that extra money is going. I also check to see what's coming up in May and June and write down to start calling around and researching what the average sand mound cost is in our area. So there you have it. That's our April 15th paycheck budget review. I find that doing these reviews are helpful to me to make sure that we keep our financial goals in the forefront of my mind and to keep referring back to them month after month to make sure that we are spending our money in the best way possible. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of my videos, please click that subscribe button. And until next time, bye.